With the sunset, we start with a white down the bottom, not like the other colours we use up the top. We start from the white down the bottom because that's where you want your crispy white colours and your golds. If you start up the top with the deeper colours, you find that you get your paint dirty down the bottom. So we're better off staying with, starting with the white down the bottom, moving up to the darker colours. I'm using my hands again. You may prefer to use a brush or a piece of rag. It doesn't matter. I'm pretty careful not to use too much toxic paint on my hands. Some colours are toxic. The chrome green is the only one we're using at the moment that is toxic. Now the Indian yellow goes over the white. Don't mix them together. Just throw the Indian yellow on about where you want sunlight. Put it on. You can put it on with a brush too. On big brush sometimes. Just bung it on. Alizillian crimson above it. And we work our way up into the purple in the corners dark again in the corners. We'll sweep the sky up this way so we come down a bit further in this corner than the other one. There's a purple there. A bit more crimson down here again. I'll put a bit of white over the lot. Now, for the sun, nice bright white on top of some of these Indian yellow pieces of paint. This paint's a lot thicker on this sky and I've advised you to put on the other skies. It's good because we can get the crispy colours with a thick paint. And because sunsets lend themselves to outback scenes, desert scenes, there's not much we need to paint over the top of the sky. The sky is one of the most important parts of the picture, so we spend a bit of time on it. Now, that doesn't look hard to do. No trouble at all. Just keep your crispy colours down here, turning into your crimson and then up into a purple. And to make it look a bit more like a sky, we'll drag the sunlight up through it. I feel I'm fiddling around in this corner a little bit more to give us a bit of a stormy effect. That might look better. Now, for the background here, out west we have quite red soil, so we'll use a, a red undercoat there. That's a crimson, it's got a bit of Indian yellow in it. I'll come into the Indian yellows and reds, and of course purple down in the corner to give us a perspective. We want a bit of water there, so we're watching not to spoil that bit. We get a bit of white in there. Try and keep this straight line, keep it rather low to give you a desert effect. It doesn't matter what colour you put in here, what I'm doing here. Keep it down to dark. I don't think too much crimson's not what we want. So. Now the reflection in the water. There'll be a little bit of Indian yellow in that, I'd say. Just drag it straight down with a brush. We can do a lot of water here and we'll pick out the best of it. I think that'll come up all right along there. Because we've got a lot of little dead trees here, we want them in the water. It's easy to put them in the water first and then put the trees in later. So we'll just give us a few little lines here. Again with a little flat brush. That's a reflection. Same as the usual way of painting water. We have a dark line on the bank. Not many reflections here, only a few dead trees. A white line underneath. And that'll do for our water. Over here, I want to put some foliage. And out in the desert, the foliage is often blue. So I'm putting Tasman blue and white. I'm just mixing them together roughly. And I'll use the dab dab brush stroke to give us this foliage in the distance. Now these are little tiny bushes that grow all over the ground and you'll see that I've got them very regimented along there. They're all equally spaced. When you're doing foliage on trees it doesn't look very nice to have them all equally, equally spaced. They look like a permanent wave but out in the desert the foliage seems to space itself at equal distance. And therefore you can do this repetition type brush stroke to put your foliage in and it doesn't look out of place.
And we'll go into a green as we come down here. It's that big, big dab, dab brush stroke all over the place. We've got to put some rocks in there now and then we'll put the dead trees in. With the rocks, load your knife with three colours. It doesn't matter how you put them on, which one you put on your knife first, just put three browns on and just rub it where you're going to have rocks, down here. Don't try to make rocks, just put the dark in where the rocks are going to be. Shape them into the picture again. Colour this in. The only reason the rocks are that shape is because my knife ran out of paint. I'm not trying to paint any particular shape, just the rock sloping in. Now for the sunlight on the rocks. Now this is important because this gives your rocks shape and perspective. I've picked up some white and burnt sienna at the same time. Mixed them together a little bit and I'll just spread a little bit on top of each rock. That rock. Don't be afraid to put it on because we're going to put foliage between these rocks. So if you put on the wrong stroke here, it doesn't matter. We just cross it out with the foliage. Now that looks like sun shining on the top of those rocks. I don't know what's happening here, so we'll put a little bit of sun shining on there too. We'll put two Aboriginals up here. To do them, take your little round brush, load it with purple, and the first fella's sitting here, sitting on his leg. Do his head first, just a ball to start with. And his body down there. And have one leg up, and he'll be sitting on the other leg. One arm resting on his knee, and the other arm holding his spears. Now, you can detail him then, give him bushy hair. Because of that paint being thick underneath, the paint's not coming off the brush as well as it would if it was directly over a normal sky, but it doesn't matter protruding jaw, a bit of muscle, and then the two spears, one out there, the other one crossing. I can see he needs a little bit of paint there. Oop. It doesn't matter that mark there. And another fella standing up here behind him. Round ball for his head to start with. And a straight line, because he's standing very straight up there. He has one leg on his knee. This leg goes straight out and back to his knee. And an arm on his knee, hand on his knee. The other one holding the spear. Now we have to put some muscle on him, a bit of hair first, shape his face. The muscle around his shoulders. And a couple of spears. You might want to fiddle around, get a lot of trouble, and get them looking perfect, but they're just silhouettes of two Aboriginals standing on the rock. We'll do a tree up behind them now, a bit of shade. Just a dark line with a light line beside it, that gives you... In fact, the light line should be on the inside for the sun, that sun shining on that. A few branches, two colours at once on the brush. And while we're with the little brush, we might as well do these background trees. They're just remembering we've got a few reflections, so we've got a few trees where the reflections are. Little background trees in the distance. And as they come forward, they get bigger.
a little bit of foliage on some of the trees just to balance the picture up. And we'll put some birds in there in a moment too. I picked up purple, chrome green and a bit of Indian yellow on the brush then. The usual dab dab brush stroke. It's a bit boring up here in the corner so we'll put a bit of nice foliage on the tree up here. Didn't particularly like that cloud, so I've crossed it out accidentally, but it doesn't matter. Now, the foliage between these rocks, this is what highlights your rocks. You look for the good bits of rock, you leave them there, and the bits that aren't as good as you'd like, you just put a bit of foliage over them. and a few birds. Oh, the brush with purple and white. Just do a little M. Smaller in the distance. If your bird comes out bigger than what you want, it doesn't matter, it means the bird's closer to you. And if you're doing a bird and you completely spoil it, put a tree in and change the bird into a branch. Well, that's a simple scene. Now, I've done this scene on canvas with masking tape. I suggest that's the best way you go about working. You have your palette there and you have your canvas here masked off to the size you want. I've done this painting longer and thinner than the other paintings because sunsets lend themselves to a long, thin scene. In fact, I think a lot of Australian outback scenes look better if they're a long, thin painting. And I'll take this last bit of masking tape off and that's about the most successful way you can work. A piece of canvas with your palette there and your painting there. I've worked on boards because it's more convenient for me at the moment.